Okay, so n my name is Peter Hellström and I'm an historian. So I'm going to speak to you today about Europe's history, but through the lens of the cabbage dolma. Each year in Stockholm on the 30th of November, we celebrate Sweden's cultural heritage on the cabbage dolma day. This cabbage dolma is a traditional Swedish dish that young people can't cook, but as you know, all grandmothers know how to do it. It is different from other popular foods such as pizza and pasta, hamburgers, falafel, because it's been enjoyed by Swedes ever since the 18th century. In fact, we can date its beginnings quite precisely. The Swedish king at the time, Karl XII, was a very ambitious man who marched his army against Moscow. But as history has proven repeated times, marching against Moscow is a bad idea. His poor men froze to death, died from starvation, were massacred or sold into slavery. Only the king and a small fraction of his army escaped, and they fled south and found refuge in the Ottoman Empire. This dramatic turn of history opened for some very early and direct interchange between Sweden and the Orient. Karl XII and his men would eventually stay for more than five years amongst the Ottomans, and when he did return, or they did return, many Turks came with them. This interchange of people and of DNA also had some long-lasting effects on ideas and practices, or what we may call culture. The cabbage dolma was perhaps the most humble and everyday result. From the Ottomans, Swedes picked up the habit of cooking rice and meat inside rolled vine leaves, but they adapted the dish to northern circumstances and began to use cabbage leaves instead of vine leaves and pork instead of beef. And so it happened that the dolma became the cabbage dolma. The Swedish name, Kol Dolma, captures the story. Dolma is Turkish for filth. Kol is Swedish for cabbage. The cabbage dolma, of course, is just food. And it's perhaps a very silly, a very silly and stupid example, but the point is that similar stories can be told about everything we think of as very typical of our own nation or of even Europe in general. I mean, think of the symbol of the cross, which we find on so many European flags and which reminds us of a Jewish preacher executed in West Asia some 2,000 years ago. Think of the Latin and the, Cyrillic, and the Cyrillic alphabets that most Europeans today and big parts of the world use for writing. These were developed from the Greek alphabet, which was developed from the Phoenician, which was developed from earlier Semitic scripts. This is how culture happens. Not only the cabbage dolma has an immigrant background, not only culture, but also people cross borders. Genetic studies has de have demonstrated that Europe is thoroughly inbred, and I think it's safe to say that Europe is, but it has also always been multicultural. This is nothing new. In 1809, Sweden lost Finland to Russia, and in this period of political turmoil and imminent and a fear of an imminent invasion also of the Swedish mainland, poets and politicians brought Karl XII back from the dead and reinvented him as a national martyr ready to die for his people. Poems were written, songs were composed, paintings were painted. Karl XII became the sweetheart of Swedish nationalists, and then in the 20th century, also of the Nazis. Each year on the 30th of November, the day he died trying to conquer Norway, Young men greeted his statue with the imperial Roman salute and waved Swedish flags with the symbol of the Jewish preacher on it. When we want to describe ourselves, we tend to speak of the past. But we always perceive this past in light of the present. The stories about Karl XII were made in, a p in the 19th century, a period of very strong nationalism. This was a century 
when nation states were formed and the modern concept of race was developed. Voltaire, a century earlier, had described the Swedish king as motivated by fame and glory, but now he was perceived as having sacrificed himself for the Swedish people. He was made a symbol of the strong Swedish race, although he was only one sixteenth Swedish. He was, in our modern vocabulary, a second, a third, a fourth, and a fifth generation immigrant. But this was easily forgotten, as there were powerful attempts to deny and negate the multicultural reality of Europe, to unmix the mixed populations and to create purified nation states or monocultures, to borrow the term from farming. This ideology, which I think we should call monoculturalism, was one of the most important ideologies to shape the two last centuries in Europe. As we know in hindsight, it was not a good idea. It led to ethnic cleansing, countless wars, isolationism, intolerance, persecution, and murder. In times such as ours, when politicians argue for cultural canons, want to introduce legislation on women's headwear, want to protect our languages or even divide people racially and speak of ethnic Swedes or true Finns, it has become urgent to question the simplified histories we continue to project onto our past. What does it mean that Karl XII, a Lutheran, was in war with Lutheran Denmark, ruled by his cousin, but allied with Muslim Turks against Orthodox Russians? Is this really a clash of civilizations? Europe has always been a melting I'm not sure where I am. Europe has always been a melting pot for people and their various ways of thinking and doing things. Everyone who has opened one history book should know this. But the history is also inscribed into our city. In the historical quarters of Stockholm there are three churches, one Swedish, one German, and one Finnish. It is therefore both ironic and also troubling when today in Europe our political elite claims that multiculturalism is a failed experiment. David Cameron in the UK, Nicolas Sarkozy in France, and Angela Merkel in Germany have all proclaimed that, in their words, multiculturalism has failed. But multiculturalism hasn't failed because it's not an ism. That people are different is not an ideology, it's the way of things. And I think it may not be politically opportunistic in these times, but we should dare to say the truth about monoculturalism. It is an ideological experiment, a recent one forced upon us from above. It has kidnapped our heritage and history for political ends. It continues to be a destructive force on this, our continent. Monoculturalism has failed. Now let people go on and let their various perspectives on things be a positive and dynamic force. European culture is still in the making. The cabbage dolma can't speak, but it still testifies to this truth. So I will end here with a silent salute. Thank you.